the only thing I really have is just probably a hundred thousand hours of listening to records. When I was a kid, um, and there are many people like this, um, kids who are drawn to music but they don't want to be a musician. They have zero appetite to learn to play an instrument or sing, uh, but they are crazy about records. They are born music listeners. Those are the people who become record producers. Sometimes they become A&R executives or they become DJs. Uh, they, they have a relationship with music, but it's not learning chords and scales. It's, it's the art of the record. It's uh, an ear for a multi-timbral signal. It's an ear for music as a whole. And we get really good at hearing performance gestures, such as timing and uh, phrasing in vocals. Uh, I hear this way better than my students do. I can describe to them the effectiveness of a vocal in terms of its relationship to the beat. Like in this section, we want the singer to be a little bit ahead of the beat. And in this section, we want the singer to be a little bit behind the beat. When the singer's ahead of the beat and the snare's a little bit behind the beat, it gives this feel. When you swap that relationship and you push that snare and you pull that vocal back, it gives the song a different subtext. So that's a kind of listening, the expertise of performance gestures that's probably similar to an orchestra conductor where you're listening to these sections and you're pulling up and pushing down just what you want to hear, selfishly. I've seen engineers that literally don't touch their outboard gear or have plug-in, you know, presets saved, things that they've designed saved, and that's their sound. Or, you know, the guys will rearrange tracks to make sure that this thing is going into this and there's a change. I don't do that because I, no, no two songs are the same. Or when people are like, well, what was your EQ setting on that? And I'm like, why would you ever want, like, you would need the exact same vocal recorded at the exact same level. It means nothing. Like, I'm going to do, I listen. I don't, I'm not a numbers guy, right? I'm, I'm, I could work in SSL blindfolded. So I'm really listening to what's going on instead of me concentrating on, on numbers. I'm, I'm listening because I come from that thing of when there was no computer screen there. If clients come to attend the session, which I do try to encourage um, people to attend mastering, especially initially when you're, you're getting to know a mastering engineer, I think it's really good to go there rather than just send something and it being an abstract thing. To meet people and communicate is a lot easier. So we'll do a playback session and I'll literally sit on the sofa and play the project. I won't play it in, with the view technically. I want to listen to it just how anyone would listen to it. And then if things feel awkward to me, I'll make notes. So, you know, often when we're listening that way, where we're relaxed, it will be more obvious what I need to do. And then I'll discuss with the, um, you know, it could be the artist, producer, mix engineer, A&R guy, whoever attends, it could be all of them. Um, we would have a discussion about what I was thinking, what I was hearing, what the album was about for them. If we have the artists there, often we need to go through the journey of the whole concept of the album. If it's a mix engineer, we might just talk about technically what they've done. So it really depends on the project. And then I'll start to master. One of the hardest things is actually you need to listen and you need to listen again and you need to keep listening and you need to keep listening. You need to listen to every one of those kick drums and check that one of them isn't, hasn't distorted or clipped or peaked. So yes, it's intense. Yes, it's, in bo yes, it's boring. Yes, it's uh, relentless. The need to constantly listen and re-listen and not switch off and so sort of be engaged with the process. And of course, one of the best ways of doing that is with having somebody else in the room uh, particularly when it comes to writing, you see how they use, how they, how they do things. I think I'm sometimes so overwhelmed with vast amounts of music that that sometimes becomes a frustration. And usually on a, on a Monday, I will have a day of silence just have, to let my ears rest, but just to, to reset. And you start to enjoy and appreciate music in a different... I mean, I'm always out, I'll hear something on the radio or something, I'll always part of me thinking, how could I incorporate that? What section could I? Sometimes it's just nice to switch off and remember that music's just to be listened to and enjoyed.